Hi, how are you doing? I hope you're doing okay. I hope you found your way here okay. I hope you're having an okay day. Um, something happened and that something is that I have more books in my life. As you can see, there is a ton of books behind me and somehow most of them are from you guys. What are you doing? You do too much and I love you so much. So I am gonna split this video up. I had originally planned to do an update or an update and book haul of my Around the World challenge. If you are unfamiliar with that, I'll just briefly go over it. And I'll also split this video into timestamps. But in 2021, at the beginning of the year, I decided that I wanted to read a book from every country in the world. And so I decided to just start from the beginning, even if I had in my past read some books from, you know, I've read books from Japan, I've read books from Canada, I just decided to start over and go through every country in the world, sometimes randomly, sometimes just what popped into my life, sometimes on your recommendation, sometimes what was already on my shelf. Um, and so I wanted to do one last update here of all the books that I read in 2022 to let you guys know as well as what books they were. And then the first part of this book haul right here will be from countries that I have not read from yet. So without further ado, let me tell you how many uh, countries I got to last year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I read from 23 different countries last year, and those countries were Japan, India, China, Russia, Chile, Finland, the UK, Turkey, France, South Africa, Iraq, South Korea, Poland, United States, Italy, Brazil, Lebanon, Canada, Germany, Zimbabwe, Romania, Mexico, and Argentina. That feels really good. Some of them were my favorite reads of all time. In my previous Around the World videos, which I think I'll just make a playlist of, but in them I told you what books I had read, a mini review on it, what I thought of, and for countries I have not yet summarized in one of those videos I thought I would do now. Oh, I actually need this notebook. My pick for Germany was The Tulip Princess. This is a collection of fairy tales. I've read other German books. I just kind of count the first one that I read. So for example, this year I've also read um, from I think two other, two or three other German authors. But this was the first book I picked up for Germany since I started this challenge. So this is a collection of fairy tales compiled by this man who I will not deign to pronounce his name. I'm so sorry. Um, and in the 1850s, he went all over um, the Upper Palatinate region of Germany and collected these fairy tales. I like this. Wasn't the greatest fairy tale collection I've ever read. They're very short, very snippy, very to the point. Um, but I am really glad I read this. And this was actually a gift. So thank you so much, Michael, because you sent me this one. From Zimbabwe, I read Out of Darkness, Shining Light by Bettina Gappa. This is an immensely researched, I think I read somewhere that 10 years. I think I say this every time, but it's just blows my mind that she spent 10 years um, researching and writing this book. So this chronicles the true story of the people who carried David Livingston's body out of Africa when he died. This was amazing. It just felt, it just like, I think so much research made it feel so intensely real and as well as just getting so much information that is not talked about or in fact just talked about wrongly incorrectly dismissed this was really really great so this was my pick for zimbabwe i'll do although i do have a few other on my shelves that i cannot wait to read as well for romania i read bangle nights this was so hard to read this tells the true story because actually the author and the woman he develops a relationship with in here she actually has a response to this book as well called it does not die she is an indian poet this tells the story of him going to india he is working there but for a while he moves in with an indian family and he develops this connection 
um, that is at times toxic and treacherous, but also sometimes loving and just all of the above. Everything that you could ever imagine occurring in a relationship between two people, jealousy, strife, tribulations, whatever, um, they basically go through it in their relationship. This was really hard to read, uh, but I really enjoyed my experience reading this. I think I gave it four stars and yeah, it's just such a meditation on like love as well, but also so much difficulty that they face in their relationship. At times it was very uncomfortable and it was just, wow. Um, so that is Bengal Nights and I cannot wait to read her, her response um, and probably her poetry too. For Mexico, I read The Iliac Crest. This is one of my favorite books of all time now. I just freaking adore this book. I've talked about it so much endlessly in my, I think, best books of the year. On a dark and stormy night, our uh, protagonist has two people knock on their door and one is an ex-lover and the other is uh, supposedly a long dead Mexican writer, Amparo de Vila, who did actually exist and I want to read her stuff so badly. They come to tell our narrator that they know their secrets and that is that he is in fact a woman. It's great. It's so great. And then finally for Argentina, I read Thus Were Their Faces. This was my pick for the Dark Academics Book Club. This is a collection of short stories and I just don't like short stories. I'm so sorry, Silvino and Gambo, because I think I would love maybe some of her other work. It's just like these were so infused with the gothic and the fantastical and everything like that. But I think just the nature of the short story for some reason, maybe it will in the future, but just who I am right now, I don't like reading short stories. So I gave this three stars, but I am so interested in reading more from her. And just to give you one last update on what I've accomplished so far this year. I have ticked off Norway because I read The Ice Palace by Tarja Vesos. This is my favorite read uh, probably almost for the whole year now, I want to say, such as it is. Um, but this is so great. This is so great. It's so devastating. It's like a poem. Um, it's about this waterfall in Norway and what it does. And it's great. A frozen waterfall to be specific. So yeah. So that was a little recap on my Around the World Challenge. And then this stack right here, these are books I have not yet shown in a book haul or probably in any video, I don't think. Uh, maybe, but these are for my Around the World Challenge. These are all books from countries I have not yet read from. So let me show you. So this first one is from Australia. This was sent to me from one of you guys months ago, I believe last year sometime, and I never got around to showcasing it in my Around the World Challenge. There's no note in it. If there was, the book has eaten the note so if this was you thank you so much um and this is a collection of poetry called my people by udguru um the, first of all this is gorgeous but it says udguru's writing has a unique place in australian literature when her poetry was first published in the 1960s she provided a brave new voice for marginalized aboriginal australians this collection of poetry and prose is a reminder of udguru's contribution to indigenous culture and the journey toward reconciliation um, I think I might pick this up soon. I was like kind of thumbing it in my February TBR. This looks amazing and it's been so long since I've read a poetry collection as well. So thank you so much for sending this to me. This looks incredible. These next two are from Kiara and we first have The Greenhouse by Mario Vargas Llosa, right? Llosa. Um, this one is from Peru and I had actually heard of this before. This looks amazing. So this one is set in a small town that borders on the jungle. The greenhouse is the title of a brothel in town where a bunch of people start to mix, get mixed up. Um, and I think we follow their lives, but then of course the greenhouse also refers to the larger Amazon. So the conflicting forces that haunt the greenhouse evoke a world balanced between savagery and civilization and civilization and one that is cursed by not being able to discern between the two. Oh my gosh. So that is the greenhouse and that is from Peru. I've not yet read anything from Peru. So thank you so much. And then the other one you sent me is from Venezuela. This one I got from your guys' recommendation. Thank you so much. This is Doña Barbara by Romulo Gallegos. Gallegos? Do the two L's always make a Y sound? Or is there a special rule where sometimes two L's can make an L sound. This one is compared to Madame Bovary, but we follow this woman and I think she's in a feud with her cousin. Yes, two cousins for a vast estate um, in the Yanyo or Prairie. So Dania Barbara is like this very mysterious woman. She's quite beautiful. She's quite captivating, but she is driven with this hatred for like all men in the world. And then I think probably this uh, feud with her cousin just absolutely aggravates that and elevates that to a whole new level. But it's actually, I think it's actually magical realism too, right? Yes, 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 it is magical realism. Um, one of the first examples of magical realism, this was published in 1929 and it laid the groundwork for people like Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Mario Vargas Llosa, who we just talked about. So 
Um, it says late gothic, early magical realism. Yes, thank you so much, Kira. This looks amazing. So that is Donnie and Barbara. Can I read you the first sentence? We haven't done this in a while. A large dugout was making its way up the Araka, keeping close to the right side of the gorge. This next one, I am so excited about. This one also came ages ago. Thank you so much. I'm also not 100% sure who this is from, but oh my gosh, this is the Blind Owl. And this is from Iran, I believe. And when it was first published, it was banned. I believe it had to be published in India because this is the Bombay edition. I had heard about this previously, but then I picked up also one of my favorite reads from last year, which was Untold Night and Day by Beiswa. And that book made so many references to the blind owl and also in a way that made me believe Untold Night and Day was working on some of the experimental writing stuff and a lot of the narrative, the structure, just everything that is infused in infused into Untold Night and Day, I think owed a lot to the Blind Owl, or at least that was my understanding. So this one has no synopsis, but what I do know is that it comes with like, it's very short, but it's even shorter because actually it comes with about uh, 20 pages, 20 pages of explanation of history um, of preparing you to read this book. First page says the printing and sale of this work in Iran is forbidden. Is it is this recent? Is it still forbidden? I have no idea. I want to do some research. Um, but I read the first sentence. This first sentence is magnificent. Um, in life, there are wounds that, like leprosy, silently scrape at and consume the soul in solitude. This agony cannot be revealed to anyone because they generally tend to group this incomprehensible suffering with strange and otherwise rare events. And if one speaks or writes about it, then people, by way of popular perception and their own beliefs, receive it with a doubtful and mocking smile. Because man has still found no cure for this, and the only available medicine is amnesia by means of wine and artificial sleep brought on by opium and other narcotics. I think I heard somewhere that we're following the mind of a man who is either very sick, going insane. Oh, I'm just so excited. It's shorter than 80 pages long. I cannot wait to read this. I think this might be an all-time new favorite. This next one is from Alina and she sent me Chess. This is from Austria. Um, I'm so excited to read this author, just like everything from him because I watched The Grand Budapest Hotel for the first time last year and it went, is it my favorite movie of all time? I don't know. I don't know why I had never watched a Wes Anderson film. What was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. Um, but The Grand Budapest Hotel, it just, Oh my god, I just want to eat th that movie's like cake. I just want to eat it. Um, but this is chess and the Grand Budapest Hotel is based on both some of the works, but also some of the life of this Austrian writer. Um, Zweig? Zweig? I feel like I say it wrong every single time. Um, but this is so short and we are set on a steamer or a ship bound for Buenos Aires in 1941. And we have a whole bunch of passengers on board. They're quite rowdy, but then it's revealed that one of the passengers is like this extremely uh, prodigious, extremely famous, extremely talented, gifted chess player. And suddenly everyone wants to challenge him to a game of chess and see if they can beat him. Um, and I think that's just what it follows. It's a disturbing, intensely dramatic depiction of the cost of obsession set in a civilization traumatized by tyranny. This one came from Maja. You inspired me to enjoy books again after a pretty, pretty bad case of job burnout. Thank you so much. Best wishes. I have heard of this one and thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is Elamut, Elamut, Elamu by Vladimir Bartol. So this one is a piece of Slovenian literature. Um, where had I heard about this? I think from you guys again. You guys give me the best recommendations and just open my eyes to so many things. Um, I don't really know what this is about, but okay, the cover is so glossy. So no Oh, I didn't read you the first sentence! <laughs> The usual last minute bustle of activity reigned on board the large passenger steamer that was to leave New York for Buenos Aires at midnight. Okay, so it says he draws characters from 11th century Persia and wove an allegory of the fascism engulfing Europe at the dawn of World War II. I really do not have a good idea what this is about. I think it's quite vague. It says, if you want to know how suicide bombers are being cultivated in Basra and Hebron, even as you read these words, if you want to learn the true story behind the 72 virgins awaiting Al-Qaeda's martyrs in paradise, this is the training manual. Bartol tells us who those women are, how they got there, and why young men are willing to die for their company. This sounds extremely intense. Chapter 1. In mid-spring of the year 1092, a good-sized caravan was wending its way along the old military trail that leads from Samarkand and Bukhara 
through northern Khorasan and then meanders through the foothills of the Elbers Mountains. Okay, so that concludes the Around the World book haul from countries I have not yet touched. And now we just have a good old regular book haul. There's also a bunch of countries in here, but I have read from those countries and I cannot wait to read more. So let's get into the next section, which is just books. This one I bought thrifted last year, but I've never shown this, I don't think. But this is Daughter of Fortune by Isabel Allende. Um, she is a Chilean author, and I also have The House of the Spirits, which is just the one I wanted to get to first because it sounds exactly like 100 Years of Solitude. But this one is historical fiction as well. I have read from Chile, actually. I read um, A Little Lumpen Novelita by Roberto Bolaño. I uh, really like that. We follow Eliza, who is orphaned at birth, and she is raised in the British colony of Valparaiso, Chile. So this is about, I think, the gold rush and gold fever because she falls in love with a man and then has to, I think they get married and then she has to follow him to California and San Francisco um, because everyone is driven mad by gold. It's a sweeping portrait of an era, a story rich in character, history, violence, and compassion. Um, so yeah, it's also gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this. I don't know where to start with her. Should I start with House of the Spirits or should I start? She has so many books out, um, but I just don't know where to begin. But I saw this one at the thrift store and I was like, you're coming home with me. Everyone is born with some special talent and Eliza Summers discovered early on that she had two, a good sense of smell and a good memory. This next one is from Jerry. Gary. It's gotta be Jerry. Gary, I'm so sorry. It's one of those two, Jerry or Gary. Thank you so much. I love when you guys write notes in the books. It makes my whole day. Um, I hope you enjoyed the small gift. No, it's not small. And I hope you don't already have this. When I came across this book, I immediately thought of you. This author in this book in particular was apparently a huge influence for Gabriel Garcia Marquez and inspired him to write 100 Years of Solitude. And this is Pedro Perramo. You guys have been screaming at me to read this for forever. Um, I cannot, I cannot wait to read this. A stunning novel from Mexico depicts a man's strange quest for his heritage. Literally on the back it says it inspires pretty much everyone else I just mentioned. So yes, I am so intrigued. You guys said that this is incredible, that it's like just groundbreaking, amazing. Um, and this was first published in 1955, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but okay, the first sentence is, I came to Camela because I had been told that my father, a man named Pedro Paramo, lived there. So he goes to this town and I think is it like Macondo? I don't know. I don't know. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. This next one is also from Jerry and I knew this book existed. Um, or no, no, I didn't know this book existed. I knew this about Murakami because Murakami has a, like one of his hobbies, one of his kind of collections and stuff is that he collects t-shirts. He really likes t-shirts. He has a huge t-shirt collection, but I had no idea they made it into a book because this is Murakami, Murakami Tea, the t-shirts I love by Haruki Murakami. So this is literally a showcase. Oh, this is literally a showcase of all of his t-shirts and like a little history about them. I think this is so fun and so cool. Thank you so much. This is so fun to go through and just like know him a little bit better. So that is Murakami t-shirts. But uh, another thing about him is that he also has a massive vinyl record collection. He has 10,000 albums, this man this man and then i already showed this in a vlog but thank you so much again you gave me the turn of the screw by henry james because i complained about my edition um and you sent me a gorgeous edition thank you so much this came all the way from nevada if i'm remembering that correctly from aurora right so thank you so much so much i read this um was it last year or was it 2020 might have been 2020, I think. One of my favorite books of all time now. I adore this. This is the classic gothic ghost story following a governess who is sent to look over two small children, Miles and Flora, in this big old creepy house. And she starts seeing ghosts. Or does she? I don't know. You tell me. I'm so happy to have a comprehensive, um, cohesive edition of it now. So thank you so much. This means the world to me. I love this book so much. The next two books are from Max. Thank you so much. You said, I'm moving out to university. I need to give away some of my books and you're choosing to send them to booktube creators, which is just so kind. Thank you so much. So maybe I'll read the note that you wrote about it actually. So the first one is Queer by William S. Burroughs. Um, and you said this is a seminal piece of 1960s queer literature. And the next one is a Clockwork Orange. Thank you so much. I picked up a Clockwork Orange in high school by Anthony Burgess. Um, and then my English teacher caught wind of it and she was like, 
uh, are you allowed to read that? And I remember taking it home and my parents seeing that I had checked this out of the library and they were like, you are not reading that. And so I wasn't allowed to read it. Um, when people tell you, you can't read something, the rage, <laughs> unbridled rage. So I've never read this. I never got through it. I think I got 20 pages through. To be fair, I think I was 14 and maybe I should not have been reading this, but I will now read it now almost 10 years later. This is extremely violent, extremely disturbing. We follow our narrator, Alex, who's 15 years old. It's just like ultra violence galore. So many trigger warnings. Um, he and his gang rampage through a dystopian future hunting for terrible thrills. And then William S. Burroughs' book. I love these. I really do like these Penguin Modern Classics. I just wish they had chosen a different color because this reminds me of like very old doctor's office vibes. It's an unflinching autobiographical self-portrait and a coruscating political novel. His only realist love story and a comic grotesque fantasy that paved the way for his masterpiece, Naked Lunch. This is set in Mexico City during the early 50s. Um, I've actually, I don't think I've ever even heard about this or anything, so I'm very, very intrigued. Thank you so much for sending this to me. Um, and I've never read William S. Burroughs at all. I think I might have started an audiobook for Naked Lunch before quickly realizing that an audiobook format was just not the way to read that book. So thank you so much, Max. I will treasure your books and I hope you have a smooth move to university. I know it's really hard getting rid of books when you have to move. <laughs> this next one I'm also very <laughs> intrigued about. This came from Lily. Thank you so much. Um, and this was actually uh, for Christmas because you said I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is Gothicana by Runix. I heard about this one I, oh god, what did I hear about this? Ashley. Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. I love you so much, Ashley. She influences a lot of my fantasy romance regs. Uh, I think we have quite a similar taste in romance books, so that's why I picked this one up. This is like a dark academia... Is it a fantasy romance? I think there's supernatural elements, but it's a very dark romance. An outcast her entire life, Corvina Clem is left adrift after losing her mother, but then she gets a mysterious letter to go to the University of Varenmore. <laughs> Um, and then when she's there, weird things start to happen because it's an old secluded castle on a mountain. And then we also follow her teacher, Vad Deverell. Vad Deverell. Um, he's a part-time professor working on his thesis, uh, and apparently this castle possesses dangers. Like, it's just a dangerous place to be. It's giving me a little bit of Naomi Novik's, um, Skullamance? Is that what it's called? The Skullamancy? Like, that place where the very school is like dangerous itself and can potentially hurt you. I'm not really sure if there's like a supernatural element. I know there's a mystery in this book. I'm just very confused, but this book also intrigues me because it does have like, it's inserted with quotes um, and little like designs and stuff. So I don't know. I hope it's a little unhinged. I'm expecting to either laugh my way through this, cry my way through this, uh, I don't know. I also love, I also love, I think this is self-published, right? It might be. Um, or am I stupid? I don't know, but I love all the playlist stuff that is being inserted into books. I think that's so fun that a lot of books I have now start with a playlist. Oh, it's such a big playlist. Oh my god, yes. Oh, and a map! There's a map! Oh my gosh. Oh, amazing. Okay, chapter one. There is nothing scarier than a blind old woman with whites for eyes suddenly gripping your arm under a full moon night. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lily. I cannot wait to get into this absolutely morbid, macabre um, book full of weird castles and things like that. Okay, where do I start? Where do I start? Someone got me tea. Thank you so much. Well-being. Okay, but then look at how gorgeous this is. Look at how gorgeous this is. Thank you so much. We have Defense Tea, Purify Tea, Invigorate Tea, Radiance Tea, and Serena Tea Tea. It smells so good. <laughs> this one is from Erin, and this came all the way from Australia. Thank you so much. This is Pizza Girl. I've never heard of this, but you said it was recommended to you when you read Convenience Store Woman, or there's some tie there. So um, I think it's something along those lines of like the everyday because we follow our protagonist who is 18 years old, pregnant, and working as a pizza delivery girl. But she becomes obsessed with Jenny, who is a stay-at-home mom new to the neighborhood. Okay, it says a blend of normal people and convenience store woman. Chapter one, her name was Jenny Hauser, and every Wednesday I put pickles on her pizza. Some of these came from Book Depository, so they didn't have any notes with them. So this is now 
your time to come forward um, and let me thank you so much. I wish I could give every single one of you guys just the biggest hug ever. So I got the waves. Why did I say that so weird? I got the waves by Virginia Woolf. There's something up my nose. There's something up my nose. So many people have recommended this to me. This is such a stunning copy. Thank you so much. Um, like you guys know, I read Mrs. Dalloway. That was the first book I read this year and it was brilliant, but I just didn't enjoy it very much. But so many people have said The Waves as well as To The Lighthouse, which is currently on my shelf. Um, just like, just read them and you will fall in love. So um, I know this is regarded as like the Virginia Woolf book. Thank you, whoever this was. I cannot wait to read some Virginia Woolf and I really hope I'm gonna love this one. This one came from Danielle. Thank you so much. Um, she said, thanks for the wonderful book videos. Hope you enjoy some tea and one of your book wish list items on me. Thank you so much, Danielle. So the tea is from Danielle too. She sent me The Wolf and the Whale by Jordana Max Brodsky. I heard about this one from Jade from JD Rereads. Um, she is enamored with winter books, polar fantasy, everything that I love so much. And so I just love getting recommendations from her for wintery books, but this one sounded so cool. I didn't know it was this long. I'm so excited. Um, but it's just so intriguing. It says there's a very old story rarely told of a wolf that runs into the ocean and becomes a whale. It says it blends Inuit and Norse mythology into an epic adventure in the frozen Arctic 1000 years ago. I'm just, I just cannot wait to learn because at the back it comes with so much information about the mythology and just everything. Oh my gosh, this is just, oh, this looks so cool. I cannot wait to read this. I might save this for next winter or I might just go for it because there's still snow everywhere and this looks amazing. So we follow this girl who is born with the soul of a hunter and spirit of the wolf. The gods have stopped listening and her family is starving. And so she journeys across the icy waste fighting for survival with every step. When she meets a Viking warrior and strange new gods, they set in motion a conflict that could destroy the world or save it. Oh, this just looks incredible. I have not heard too many people talk about it. Jade is the only one I've heard talk about it. So I have really, really high hopes for this book. This just sounds like everything I want to read. So that is The Wolf in the Whale. Thank you so much, Daniel. <gasps> Let's do some manga. You guys sent me some manga. Thank you so much. This one came from Kashwani and I've actually heard of this. This is Yatsuba volume one. Um, I have had my eye on this for so long. This just looks like the absolutely most heartwarming thing. Like the feel of manga, it's just nothing else. I just love this feeling so much. The texture. Um, thank you so much. She said, um, hope you enjoyed this manga. It's one of my all time favorites. Thank you. Um, so this follows Yatsuba. The synopsis is really hard to get there because it's just like in the voice of like a five year old screaming. What I can glean from this. She moved with her father to a new house and moving is fun because people wave. Really no clue. It just looks like a happy go lucky slice of life. Um, moving to a new neighborhood as a child. Growing up is the vibe that I'm getting a little bit. This looks absolutely adorable. Like, look at this, look at this. And then this one just matches perfectly. Look at this. Oh, so this is Hunter x Hunter. Thank you so much. This is by Yoshihiro Togashi. Oh, this one is by uh, Kiyohiko? Kiyohiko Azuma. Thank you. Um, this one I haven't heard of actually until you sent it my way. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, hunters are a special breed. So we follow people who are hunters and they are trained to track down beasts, magical beasts, oh, and treasures and even other men. But if you become a hunter, it requires like a ton of training and you also have to pass this exam to give you a license to be a hunter and not very many people pass it. We follow Gon who lives in the country, but he he's like, I'm gonna be a hunter. His father was a hunter. And so now he is leaving to go on this journey himself. Is this like set in a school because he's taking the exams? I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm very intrigued. I just love this when you guys send me manga because I really don't know too much of what's out there or what I would enjoy, but you guys always hit the mark. So thank you so much. Um, and I'm so happy I have somewhere on my shelf because I was almost out of, or I had almost read all the manga I own. So thank you too so much. This is crazy. <laughs> This is also crazy because one of my last vlogs I mentioned that my copy of Great Ex well my copy of Great Ex Expe <laughs> my copy of Great Expectations just like fell apart and so not one not two but three of you sent me new copies of Great Expectations and somehow they're all different copies and they're all gorgeous thank you so much so um the first one I hauled was from Juan in my last book haul but then these two came this first one is from Martin thank you so much and this one what edition is this this is the Wordsworth edition Miss Havisham on the front love it and then this one is from carolyn 
They lighted my life. Thank you so much, Carolyn. This is gorgeous too. This is my first penguin um, cloth bound edition too. So thank you guys so much. I'm so happy to have editions of my favorite Dickens um, as of right now. But um, yes, this one is from Carolyn and Martin and Juan. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, this next book is from Derek. You said, I hope you love this book. I found you on booktube and watched your best books of 2021. And I'm honored to share with you my best book of 2021. So this is What Death Taught Terrence. Am I stupid or are you the author? From Derek McFadden. This book is by Derek McFadden. If you wrote this book, thank you so much. This is about Terrence who is dead. He's died, but he learns that he has to find the meaning of his life, I think, before he can move on or else his soul will be destroyed. He'll be banished. Yes, his soul will be destroyed. So then we follow Terrence, I think, either going through the memories of his life or going through his life along with other people who he was connected to and finding out like what life means essentially in order to move on, which is an interesting concept. So that is this one. Thank you so much. I also, it's so buttery. I just love buttery books. This is not, that's not smart. That's not a smart idea. This one is from Sabine. Thank you so much. You guys keep throwing Kirsten Gear books in my face and I freaking love it. So this is A Girl About Time by Kirsten Gear. She wrote probably my favorite young adult book of all time, Castle in the Clouds. And now I have the starting first two books in uh, two of her other young adult series. So this is the Ruby Red trilogy. And we are following Gwyneth who discovers that she is a time traveler, but then she falls in love with someone from the past, I'm assuming. She also gets caught up in a sinister society that is trying to change the past. And that's all I know. That is all I know. Um, but I cannot wait. I just love Kara Singer's book so much and I'm so excited to see if her series like live up to my love of Castle in the Cloud. So thank you so much. I also love this cover. <laughs> I love it so much. Thank you. This one I flipped out when I opened. <laughs> and this is a gorgeous copy of Rilke's work. Look at this. Are you kidding me? This is so gorgeous. It's all in German. It is a, oh, it is a German edition. I will not attempt to read you the first sentence yet, but I cannot wait for the day when I can actually like read this whole thing just in German, but then it also came with this really cool bookmark of Leo Tolstoy <laughs> and his toes, Tolstoy's toes. So thank you so much. This is so gorgeous. I love this edition. It is so simple and so sweet. And I just, I just think this is so pretty. Like this is so aesthetically pleasing. So thank you so, so much. Then we have a couple other books again. Thank you so much. So first we have Upstream by Mary Oliver. Um, this has been recommended to me countless times. I also know Carolyn loves this book, um, but this is selected essays, I think about nature and like her connection to nature. I think a lot of it also owes to Walt Whitman, is indebted to Walt Whitman. Um, yeah, but if this is a good place to start with Mary Oliver, this is 100% where I will start. I would love to even read just an essay a day or something, but again, thank you so much. And then this one also came with it. And this is literally show me a healthy person. Uh, by Darcy Wilder. This is giving me very past Tumblr vibes. Um, it's sent in either text messages or like emails um, and meditates on death, love, longing, and disappointment. Two very different ones. Thank you so much. Do I dare? I dare. And then finally, the last two here. Thank you so much. Whoever, I think this one also came from Book Depository and that is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I've not yet got around to reading. Oh, I have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell on my shelf, but I've not yet read Piranesi and everyone says this is fantastic. I think I might start with Jonathan Strange just because that's her first novel. Um, but this one is fantastic. I feel like I don't really need to say anything about this. We follow Piranesi, who is this guy, and he lives in this house that kind of gives me House of Leaves vibes um but it's like it can move it's just this weird fantastic structure i think the ocean is also in his house <laughs> that's literally all i know but P i've not heard a bad word about this book so I'm very excited about that one. Oh dear heavens and then finally the last one is a very sweet cute little book called here the world entire by anwen kia hayward and this is a retelling of medusa never heard about this so thank you so much for sending this into my life i have not yet read a medusa retelling or reimagining so this looks fantastic and it smells amazing okay oh my gosh i gotta go before i knock this over thank you guys so much for watching thank you just thank you way too much for sending me books like it it just always blows my mind like every time every time i either go to my p.o box or get some kind of mail it always ends up just being like 
beauty and light and life from one of you guys do make sure to check your mailboxes soon if you like left your return address or anything like that on the package you, you sent me because i've been putting my stationary kit to good use is all i will say so thank you guys so incredibly much i'm so excited to get into these if you have thoughts on any of these let me know my throat is about to bleed itself dry so i will go i'm gonna have a very cozy morning of reading but then i've got to head out to class until the next time i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching ciao